Um, my name is Adele. I will be presenting machine learning techniques in predicting rate of binding sites in Proton. So um, uh, I've been here in a, like a very short time, but luckily I've had like a couple tons of fun. I'm also like did some nice work because thanks to this kind of field, I'm not in the wet lab, so things get pretty fast. So yeah, what I will be talking about right now, it is just a brief about me. What I am. What is my background? And what is, what was my summer training experience in like very short and brief time like for you guys? And what is the project I was working on? Like not going into technical details because I know it's a bit boring. And uh, it's just like things about the machine learning in case somebody doesn't know what is machine learning, especially in biology because I know everybody here has a very strong background in biology except me. And <laughs> so what was the project progress and yeah, what are the next steps? So yeah, about me. So yeah, that's basically me. And uh, I have, uh, like I've been studying in uh, like computer science all my life. And uh, I'm almost like a graduate for like, my bachelor's degree in uh, computer engineering uh, from my university. And yeah, I'm considered, considered to be like a data, a data analysis wizard. Like I can do all sorts of stuff with data, um, all of stuff. And also scripting automation, stuff like that. And yet, machine learning. How many of you guys have heard of machine learning? Okay, good, good. So yeah, and also yeah, I'm from Egypt. That's uh, that's good. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So my journey at CNIO. That's basically me when I came to CNIO. Like that's the biology because my biology background is this much, and uh, I was like struggling at the beginning because I'm, like I'm working the cancer research center, so I have to have like a at least the basics. But luckily, the bioinformatics unit came in. <laughs> and uh, everybody in the lab was like super helpful, super nice. Uh, whenever I have any kind of question, like I'm just going straight there, not shy, anything. So yeah, my like kind of journey of exploring, like fitting the basics in biology and genomics and everything to get me started in the project, just the uh, first two weeks, I guess. Yeah, I had uh, what I need. So yeah. And uh, yeah, basically my journey here started with the onboarding process, like getting to know each and like everybody. And thanks to Fernando, who's not here, he's my, supposed to be my boss, my direct boss. And um, he set up like kind of a one, one meeting with everybody in the lab, so I got to know everybody's background. And um, yeah, of course I got like a strong, supposedly strong basis in, uh, in biology and genomics and computational biology specifically. And uh, yeah, the next step was to set up my environment, technically, because, you know, um, computational biology, you need to set up your environment, do stuff, your laptop. And uh, also, I agreed on the project, like, uh, discuss what, this, what kind of project we're going to do. So yeah, luckily, I was, uh, like, I was supposed to do, like, um, something that is normally uh, everybody that comes into summer training does, like, replicating research paper or doing something that is um, completely Clear. But luckily there was like a machine learning challenge, like Unicrut, I think all of you know already what is Unicrut. And um, they just launched like a machine learning challenge and it's in, in some sort of specific part of biology. I will tell you, tell you about it uh, next. Uh, so yeah, I joined the machine learning challenge and it's very exciting. It's still an ongoing. So yeah, what, about, what is the machine learning challenge? What are we doing in the project specifically? So basically in every like protein, the sequences. They're supposed to be like, like specific residuals where the metals binds to. So uh, some residuals are like, nah, we're not going to bind any metals because so we don't like it. And others are like very likely to bind to these metals. So what are we doing exactly is we are trying to use the, the, the computational power and the computational methodologies to predict which um, like residuals in this sequence sequences are going to bind to, uh, to metals, like metal ions, and which metals are we, are we expecting there. Um, some of you would be like, so we should, we, how can we trust machine learning and like how, we, how can we trust the, the computers uh, about this part? Um, because like, yeah, experimentally you would know exactly what is, what kind of uh, metal ion is there and you know all the details. 
So I will tell you next about machine learning. How many of you guys have heard of AlphaFold? AlphaFold? Oh yeah, okay, nice. So for you who didn't like uh, have an idea what AlphaFold is, this is exactly what like the representation of how machine learning is transforming everything, especially in biology. So um, AlphaFold basically predicts the 3D structure of proteins based on the sequence, like literally based on the sequence. And um, they have released uh, like a next, uh, you can say, version of AlphaFold. And this version just exceeded everything, like almost everything. This chart, like, uh, I don't know if there's a laser here. <laughs> okay, let's go back to the, the chart. So anyways, the chart like basically tells you the confidence for the uh, kind of like the accuracy this uh, different methodologies got. And this is also for the next version of the article. This is basically an algorithm that is that like utilizes machine learning. And machine learning basically is something you can say it's a black box kind of an engineering um, like solution that most of the machine learning techniques right now we don't understand, like humans don't understand. Because basically, you can think of it is, as like many weights, like weights. And these weights are just so it gets you the results you want. How can we know the result we want? Because we have data, and the data is really annotated. For example, um, I'm just uh, interested to know if I have a box and if I get something out of this box, is it um, like we have holes inside and it's green and yet and red and whatever white? So I'm interested to, to, to know how uh, to predict what kind of what color is this hole. Okay. So I have data for for this. Like for example, I have data that um, like for the for this certain sequences in the project for you know in this certain sequences we have uh, experimental data that tells us okay in this residual you will find this uh, metal like zinc or calcium or something. So we have data and it's well annotated. So thanks to you guys, it's experimentally uh, annotated. We take this data and we give it to like a certain algorithm. This algorithm is, is, is designed so it has a feedback loop, kind of a feedback loop. So this feed, feedback loop tells this algorithm how to learn to identify itself. How do we understand it, like 100% understand what's going on in this black box? Not really, because uh, when, when things get complex, we humans don't understand it because it's basically a huge amount of data fit into like something we just simplify it as a, as a black box. And then we just say, um, gets us the result we want. So this like, um, like algorithm that I fold, it just predicts perfectly almost every sequence. You can try it yourself. You can just go and Google and say like AlphaFold and then you will find the search box. You can write the, the protein that you want and it will get you like a 3D structure for it even if it doesn't exist. Like even if experimentally it doesn't exist. And surprisingly, you can say, like, you can see that the score is almost in the experimental, like it, it, it came close to the experimental like accuracy because yeah, in the experimental um, trial like uh, um, evidences there is also a curiosity. So um, there is like, uh, so it achieved like a accuracy which is competitive with the experiment. And you can see that there's 200 million entries. How many years do you, you need to annotate this experiment? I think they can, like, or maybe no one can do it. So uh, yeah, so it's an engineer, like an AI or like machine, like machine intelligence engineering world. Um, and that's something similar to what we're trying to do. So yeah, let's get back to the, to the challenge we are working on. So basically what I've been doing and the things that I've been doing uh, in the lab is to do um, like data exploration because in anything that includes data, especially even if it's like something, it's machine learning and like, yeah, it's, it's amazing and everything. But yeah, you have to do like a very perfect data exploration because basically for Unicrot, they just gave us like a bunch of data sets and they're like, okay, take this data sets, we have it, but we don't know what's going on. Just take the data sets and do do your job, like do your job. So yeah, so we they give us like a positive training set and negative training set. What does it mean? Like something positive and negative. Positive means it's they know, they think they know, basically that in this sequences like the four hundred 
sounding sequences almost, um, they know where exactly the methods are binding in the sequence and what kind of methods. And the other ones, they have like almost 200,000 sequences, they say, oh yeah, we think that these ones doesn't even have like method binding sites. They doesn't have even these. So they gave us this and they told us, okay, go ahead, do your prediction, do your machine learning shit and let us about it. So yeah, we have to explore this because uh, our team is like so in the, in the data and through the data exploration because it takes time, you have to understand what's going on in there. Because there are misannotations, there are things that uh, like duplicate. There are um, things that you wouldn't expect to see because you have a strong biology background, like uh, thanks to almost like uh, everyone in the team, they know that this thing doesn't exist and shouldn't exist because they, they know it from experience. Um, so yeah, we have we have to deal with the data and clean it and do some stuff with the data. And yeah, we like the next step was to construct the main database because for you to, to be fully understanding to what's going on, you have to construct the database to the database to it so you can like run your scripts and algorithm and everything. And the last step was to explore some like already existing machine learning algorithms so we can you know um, know what is the, the current benchmark for us. And yeah. So the next steps for that would be to use a pre-trained model. What is a pre-trained model? It's something that is already existing, something that black box is already existing. And we use this black box and we try to adjust something inside. Something it means like layers in this black box because like any machine learning algorithm has like layers. And this layer is just one layer or something. And we try to adjust it and because we have our refined data set, that's a very big part in any machine learning process is you have to um, have the, the perfect data set. There is nothing there for perfect, but like we are trying to get it like as perfect as possible. And finally, creating or constructing an end-to-end -end solution, something that will resonate with anybody that doesn't have any computer science uh, background. It's an end-to-end -end solution. You just have a, a, user, a nice user interface. You just write your uh, routine. It will get your predictions if there is something there. You don't need to worry about what's going on in the background. So this kind of solution is needed for anybody that has only biology background and wants to use this software. Um, and yeah, finally, potentially publish a research paper based on the output in the system because for now there is not that much uh, contribution to this work, especially in the computational uh, things. Oh yeah, thanks. And uh, yeah, I wanna, like, uh, I wanna make sure that I give, give everybody, uh, I didn't want to include people because I don't want to forget anybody because like <laughs> thanks to everybody here, especially the uh, team I own in general and like the bioinformatics lab in specific and of course my uh, my uh, my mentors and everybody. Almost for you guys, thanks for coming. <laughs> Taking your time. So yeah, anybody has questions? Even if it's about Egypt, I don't really mind. <laughs> yeah. Not sure, go ahead. Have you have you started talking about which metrics you're gonna be focusing on the most? Because I, I mean, I don't have a ton of experience with machine learning, but this, the whole story is never just with accuracy, right? Yeah, yeah. So have you talked about what other metrics you're going to consider? Okay, so um, basically what he means with metrics, because for machine learning there are different kinds of uh, like, like metrics we usually... Ways to evaluate yes, the, evaluate the effectiveness of the model. Yeah. is nice or not, um, and gets the target or not. And especially in biology, we care more about the false positives than because you know, imagine somebody who's uh, um, like that's that's specifically for biology. Because you know, for machine learning, it's very hard for anybody that has a medical background to trust this thing. Because like uh, historically, or, like right now, what we're like the current situation is everyone's like I have to consult like somebody who's professional so I can like make sure that this is this process is going is going correct. And uh, but it's changing because like you know time and money, it's, uh, it's changing this, uh, this like, uh, thoughts. So for when it comes to uh, like metrics that we're, we're going to use, we have the, this kind of, um, this kind of approach that we, um, because you know, it's computational, uh, like cost. So a computational cost could be something that we consider making a grid search. Grid search means you have different metrics and the one that resonates more with you, like the one that changes when you change something in, the, in your, in your structure or like the architecture, this one is the one that you're going with. But usually and typically, you go with the, the most common ones, accuracy and something called ROC. 
which is like the, uh, it's like a curve, and you then take the, the area under this curve, and this ROC curve is like, includes almost every metric. It's just like a, a general kind of a score. So you give it to your prediction, it says like, um, is this prediction nice or not? Nice in terms of um, accuracy, precision, and overall performance when it comes to biases. So yeah, so yeah, um, you usually go for the common ones. And specifically, if we have like a very specific case, we just, we just like have this uh, uh, phase where we explore different uh, metrics. But yeah, we usually go with the, the most common ones. <laughs>